minister and having the um, the, 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 the president of the state issuing statements they are so dehumanizing, evoking violence, not once, not twice, continuously, for months, it's supported by ju jurisprudence in other, in other cases, that this is genocidal incitement. And look what, it's been reflected, it has reverberated across the conduct of troops on the ground. They've used the same words, Amalek, Amalek is a clear, is a, is, is a program in itself. And then, as you say, as you say, are there documents? If you read my report, you will see that I've quoted official documents, legal analysis, that the, 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 the legal justification that Israel uses, there are two, one, one version and then an updated version with the key legal findings. And it's exactly what I said, it's humanitarian camouflage because they justify what they're doing using IHL categories. Now let's head to Washington DC and speak to Nizar Farshak, who is a lecturer of international affairs at George Washington University. Thank you there for joining us here on TRT World. How big of a deal is it that this UN Special Rapporteur is using the word genocide now? It's very important, of course. Uh, there are legal consequences to engaging in uh, genocide. Um, even if Israel contests it, um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the point being that there are um, communities, of, I mean, international, the international community and countries that have taken positions on fighting genocide. And therefore, once the UN has determined that genocide uh, is happening, uh, all of these countries that have committed to fighting against genocide are under that obligation. So it becomes a, a matter of fact and not a matter of opinion whether there is or isn't a genocide. I mean, there's also a court case going on, right, where the International Criminal Court is looking at whether, uh, whether actually Israel is committing genocide. Will this have an impact on these proceedings? Uh, yes, so the criminal court looks more on individual responsibility, while the International Court of Justice looks at the state as a representative, like as, as a legal entity that's recognized in the international community. So there are uh, different types of consequences, uh, and there are countries that recognize or have uh, acceded to the ICJ, or the moment you are part of the UN, you automatically recognize the International Court of Justice. Uh, while there are other countries that do not recognize the international or have not ratified the international court of um, uh, international criminal court, so it, that's only the technical difference between which countries uh, abide by those uh, um, courts. But a statement like this, is it actually going to make any kind of difference? I mean, we've had the UN Security Council calling for a ceasefire. We've had the, 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 the courts already in January telling Israel they need to make sure that they're not committing acts of genocide. The U.S. Special Rapporteur, her words, will that have any kind of impact on what's happening in Gaza? It will have some impact on, uh, and uh, it gives ammunition to uh, the pro-Palestine communities and the pro-international law, in fact. Uh, uh, factions are across the globe to have uh, legal ammunition to use in their countries uh, to boycott and to go after uh, Israeli officials and Israeli institutions that are implicated in the genocide. However, Israel and the U.S. unfortunately have been very clear in that uh, they are not phased by such uh, uh, declarations and are continuing in the genocide uh, regardless. All right. Thank you for your time and your analysis here on TRT World.